can adjust the camera here because we can't see one. I think he prefers it that way. Oh, you're hearing those voices too? I think you're making anybody watching seasick right now. <laughs> yes, if you were you're, you're hearing those voices also. Nope, we're not on video. We are. We are. <laughs> you were nodding the camera. Oh, good. So I went. Well, I, I said he oh, no, she camera. got you. Don't worry. It's all recorded. That's what she was trying to do was make sure you were in there. I'm hearing voices Are we good? again. Jen, can That's I start this? Say. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. I will call regular town board workshop meeting number 41 to order. Ask the clerk to note that all town board members are present along with our town attorney, Peter Godfrey. Item number one is agenda review. Does anyone have anything they need to discuss on tonight's agenda? Lots of things. So let's see. First of all, long road distribution facility. So um, a couple of residents wanted us to just discuss, it wasn't properly posted over the weekend. And not knowing what the exact law is, if Peter, if you could tell us what are the requirements regarding posting something like this. It was previously available. There's been a lot of public comment, but the final version, what's your thoughts on that, Peter? Um, I, I, it's on the agenda. You mean it wasn't on the agenda on time, or what was it, not? The, the um, so what happened was the document was double sided, right. and they posted only every other page. They must have scanned it one sided and posted it that way, right. as opposed to double sided. So there was Which a, it was reposted this morning, right? So it's been posted since early this morning, yeah, since been, nine o'clock this morning. It's been commented on seven ways to Sunday. It is right. not one of those things like a local law that has to be published for a certain period of time. It's it's only posted because it's on our agenda and the, the, our custom is to try to post the agenda on the on our uh, on the internet and make it available to the public in advance so it's it's really pursuant to your rules not pursuant to some other rule Mike, that you're so it pursuant to our decision i think right. also mike we got that um i think it's all in our minds because of dan spitzer's feedback to us we did get that hodgson russ client alert which said in all cases is really to the extent practicable so right. it didn't end up being that firm as maybe um, we thought when it was interpreted. Peter probably weighed into the interpretation for that. I'm not sure if you wrote it or Chuck wrote the client alert yeah, how it went, uh, right. but it, does, yeah. it didn't sound as restrictive to us doing business as it might have. And, and right. just the nature of what this document is, it's been published and it's really, we're just kicking the ball by starting this. I mean, then all the real work starts as far as this is really just doing a table EIS. of contents. I mean, we can even make an edit right now is also well, another point. Yeah, you could. You could. And you actually, could I'm going to ask for one, um, <laughs> which I don't know who's going to do it. Is it a grammatical error? So it's just, we missed the word safety under the first sentence under work first re worker, first responder and community safety. It says the section must provide a discussion related to maintaining community blank, including but not limited to. So it should have been community safety, including but not limited to. Right. So let's miss the word safety can, in there. That's scrivener's sure. error. Yeah, can, it's fine. We can so change that. Is it Dan that's going to put the final thing uh, out? Yeah. Yes, Dan has been making all the edits. Just I so can, long as we. I can probably do it if I need be, but he has got the original document too. So if it's just inserting the word, that's we'll get it. Right. Ron, Rhonda just forwarded it all out to everyone, so. Okay, so I think we're moving forwards on that one. I, I mean, it's would just be a bureaucratic yeah, that's, delay I mean, that would is, have no impact. Ultimately, two weeks wouldn't make a difference. Um, no, because this is just starting the process. This is the very beginning. Yeah. You know, I mean, they have to provide all these things There's we're asking a ton for. Of then it has to go through review. We don't have an escrow agreement in place yet. We. And there'll right. be more questions. You know, I mean, I figure we'll talk about it more during the regular meeting, just in terms of what it does and doesn't do. And is it a full EIS, blah, blah, blah. So, well, under the law, it has to be a supplemental EIS. That was explained to us. Right. So, but I think 
but it really, public, it really is more of a, full, if you that. do a full EIS right now, you're cutting out things that we don't want to cut out. Yeah. As it was explained to us, it allows us to keep all of that previous content in addition to, like, this is, it's the opposite of what intuitive would be. It doesn't seem like it would make sense, but it's in our best interest to not disregard that document. Right. Thought we were pretty good on that. Oh, I, I agree. Um, okay. But I do think we should continue to fill in the blanks for the public as well. That's Understood. all I'm doing. Got this it. is more for the public than for us, I think, so mm -hmm. they understand what we're doing. Got it. Um, special use permit renewal. So are we doing anything with that special use permit? I think it's related to the sheep. As long as the sheep are gone, I don't see why we can't approve it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think, and Pete, can you confirm, um, that's an M1 district, then I don't think ag animals are allowed in it. So it would be a variance. So it should go through the zoning board. If they wanted to keep sheep there. Yes. Right. So I don't think we can approve this special. Was this special use just for this? This is just for the solar. We This happened to come up. This renewal came up the same day as we learned about the sheep. So we didn't approve the renewal, mm -hmm. but we figured out what was going with the sheep. So the sheep is out. This is just the renewal of that's the right there permits. was a special use permit application have different. To get a variance we denied the special the use we denied the application for the special use permit for the sheep because right. of what you just said about mm -hmm. it not being a permissible use in that I district have no idea how the zoning board even falls on that so issue. tom is correct but we can we can look at the special use permit now that they're the right. violation is, is we, taken yeah. care of. And we talked about- We just this. held it hostage until that was resolved. And we talked about the possibility of revising our zoning laws to permit that as a special use, but I think it's more, let's see if other if other people are actually gonna use that before we go and change the law for, for one, one instance of something. Yeah. So, right. Right, right. Okay, so what else? Oh, uh, Rivertown. Um, are we doing anything with that tonight? I don't think yeah. we are. They're, I, they're well, presenting. They're, yeah, but well, they're presenting. Mike, they're presenting here Mike, the workshop. Yeah. Uh, Mike's talking about, yeah, we need to, and I talked to either John or Jen about this earlier. We need to, I think, not now and not at tonight's meeting, but we need to sit down and put our heads together and come up with what we think is an appropriate way to review these PDD applications. Because, yeah, we can... We can have a public hearing on the rezoning, the PDD. We could grant the rezoning now, but what good does it do when the rezoning is really conditioned on there eventually being a pro an approved plan? So I think we can find a way to, to, to process these things and hold our public hearings and do the work that we need to do in a manner that will inform the public, permit us to get the public feedback and do this in a logical manner. I think, yeah, I so agree. We I, need a process for this. A process that, change. That people understand mm -hmm. what what step one, two, three, four. Yep. And, and that's the thing is the, the process begins with them making the application for the rezoning to a PDD and we could approve it. But why I don't personally, I don't see a, I don't see a reason we should ever approve the rezoning basically until we're getting until we have a plan to go with it because right. it doesn't do them any good. Which we don't have a plan officially on this one or is that the official plan that we've received they're going to present as a plan today but yeah. when when you just do the pdd it really doesn't give them anything they can't build anything they can't do anything until they get a plan that we approve too so we can do those things together down the road when you actually do the approvals i think but we just need to kind of sit down probably with legal approval of the, the pdd will not guarantee approval of the plan they're presenting correct right now right so there's no, I don't think it gets them or us any advantage to approve the PDD six months, a year, two years beforehand. But like we can, just process wise. So for like South Point, we've actually- have we, That's already a PDD. The PDD, have we the approved rezoning all the complete. plans. No, no. no. But, but they still did clear cutting. The, yeah. But yeah, what I'm thinking is, you know, I think Tom brings it up because for us and for residents, for them to come to a public hearing on a rezoning, when they haven't seen the details of the project, it's unfair for them to speak into that and speculate. And that's when rumors can begin. Um, well, I've maybe seen it could be this or it could be that. I think the, um, tra the trajectory in a different direction to more standardized format would be a good idea, Tom. But in, yeah, but in talking with Pete about it too, because we said, well, why, why'd we have the public hearing already? 
Mm -hmm. because we have no information. One thing the public hearing did do, especially in Rivertown as an example, it got a lot of people to understand what was going on and come to, and that's what we want to do. So I don't think we'd want to put everything off as far as public hearings to the end, because we might lose out on a chance to engage the community and get their feedback. But I think there's a way we can, we can do it better. Shoot it up the middle a little bit. So when this, one of two spots, when this comes up tonight, could we do a referral to the cab and have them present to the conservation advisory board? I think they've done the planning board. I don't know that they would want. The cab board already weighed in. I saw. No, we just discussed it. We were saying we really need to meet with these folks, maybe get see if we can get permission, which I'm going to ask for tonight, to walk the property and just understand what they're doing. I think that would be appropriate, but probably not until they have some idea of what their plan is, which I think they do today. So I'd right. be open to that depending on what they present to us tonight. So well, we can. I, I'm going to ask them if they're okay. You, you just did. They're right yeah, there. They're right here. <laughs> Can you, Mr. Treadle, would you just, sure. yeah, December 2nd of 2020, yeah. you came in, or the third, you came and gave right. us it. So we gave a, a brief overview. We've had a couple right. of meetings with neighbors, uh, workshops, planning sessions, where we mm -hmm. uh, got input from the, the neighborhood. Um, we were asked to come to the board, when was that, in August, um, to present the project at that time, which we did. Uh, then we were referred back to the planning board, which was, we, we met with the planning board, presented the project. Um, so I, I think we <laughs> feel like we were kind of going through, you know, a maze here. Mm -hmm. We can't seem to get to, to the finish line. And, you know, it's a project that we have a concept plan. It will be tweaked, certainly, but we can't proceed with detailed design and engineering until we know that we have the zoning, the zoning, you have a commitment. So it's, you know, it's the <coughs> chicken or the egg concept. Yep. Right. We cannot so, design the project fully until we know whether we can do the project. So what started this was but, the conservation advisory board. Would you be willing to meet with them and just present and answer some questions on the 18th of November at 7 PM? Certainly we're more than happy to meet with anybody out Great. there. And, and, feel like we've been extremely open and transparent about this project mm -hmm. and trying to work with the people, with the neighbors, uh, the town. Uh, I don't know, Eamon, do you have any, yeah. anything to add? Um, so the uh, PDD so regulations under the town's code is pretty specific about the process and we've followed that to the T. I'm surprised that this board has not had uh, the master plan in front of them because we do have a pretty solidified master plan that we had to submit in multiple copies. Mm -hmm. Um, in different sizes. Um, and I'm surprised that you're saying you've never seen no, it. No, I, I have seen it. I was talking about the public. We understand what's going on. We're not, it's not singling your project out. The reality is we had a public hearing before you guys had a project that was a concept plan that was submitted to us. And the residents came in and were concerned because they got a notice that the property was being rezoned with no details. This isn't a shot at your project or anything. I actually really like your project given where it is and it's probably our process it, it's our process it has right. nothing to do with you guys our all. discussion it's, is our then, problem that you're it's the, an the internal problem yeah. started with us holding a public hearing without a plan sitting in front of everybody but that is sure. but that right. is the yeah. process is prescribed and by I, the law i think that was to, to my confusion where i tried to get up in front of you guys and it wasn't really my chance well no that I had a powerpoint the, queued up the public office. hearing was last week no it weeks. was no it was much longer quite a while no so that was actually sort of um, a procedural misfire where it was scheduled originally for in July. And according to the town's regulations, we first get referred to the planning board, which we did in August. Um, we actually went to the planning board twice and uh, got their feedback the first time and represented a different plan the second time, it was then referred to you guys um, in October, uh, where we then came for the public hearing, which is after the planning board, you're supposed to have the plan public hearing, which we did, um, which I feel, you know, we, the public hat, I'm not, I'm all about transparency and sharing our plan because I'm proud we, of it as well. But um, I think the public has had multiple opportunities in addition to the neighborhood meeting that we had um, in August as well. 
So we're really not, we're not trying to I, and I, know, not be transparent here. But. And again, I, we, I never got the impression that you guys were, like I said, I was here when you guys brought it to us last December in cons. I think even that is online for people to see. So uh, like I said, that was an internal process discussion, not really targeted at your project or any project in particular, just things we can do better. That'll help you guys. So it's not a maze as well as the residents to ex understand what to expect when one of these applications is presented to the town. Do uh, we, I have that uh, presentation with me tonight? If um, we want to, is yeah. Well, you power? guys, you guys are yeah, on our agenda. Know. We're going to yeah. get down there, and you okay. guys yeah. are going to have an opportunity. Oh, we'll get there. To give a presentation. Okay. So, okay. And then my only question about you know the conservation board is that the whole the purpose of the planning board as as it, under the code is really to go through that process, and the conservation board really isn't part of the process um, as far as the PDD regulations are concerned. So I just kind of question that, and then um, I would like to add that. You know, yes, there's some confusion about the concreteness of the plan going into the PDD, but as Roger was saying, it's, we can, the whole purpose under the code also is to not invest substantial re resources without any kind of certainty of the rezone. The purpose of the concept plan here is to show us what our intent is to do under a rezone um, and, you know, with reasonable concreteness. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really, you know, what we've done with our plan today. So, right. Um, and I mean, we, we get that, but you also don't have a, you can't go pull a building permit once we rezone no, it because we, you need final plan approval we as well. We go through detail. Plans. And that's, that's right. my we point. Offer, we often refer to our advisory boards early on in the process and throughout the process multiple times for feedback on different things. Mm -hmm. They'll be your best friends in the sense that they will get factual information out there about your project and disseminate sure. it to interesting par interested parties. So happens with nearly every project. So actually yeah. any major project would go before the advi the conservation advisory board. The planning board is on approval. The conservation board is advisement to the town board. So that's why there's a little bit of a difference. The there. only real difference is the fact that it requires us to send it to the planning board because even their approvers aren't binding right. on you. So, but there's always we the, have these we yeah. have these boards. We like to rely on them for their expertise that we don't have. So the we, difference you'll see is the the conservation board won't approve or reject the plan. They'll say, "Can you consider this, that, or the, or the other thing?" Whereas the planning board will up or down, say, yes, we we approve the plan or no, we don't approve the plan. So there's where some of the differences between the two. You'll probably see this go to traffic safety as well. Understood. So I think you understand that, yeah. yeah. All right. Thank okay. you all. We'll okay. be back with you guys in a few. Thank you. Yep. We've already covered half of it, not all of it though. <laughs> Anything else on the agenda review, Mike? Uh, were we gonna discuss the so cannabis is just consumption. It's not distribution. That didn't change at all. And then, there, um, are they leaving? No, it's going on the hallway. And then the other was the bed and breakfast. Did we want to discuss that at all? That's all I had. Or are we all good there? Oh, well, it's on the it's on a regular agenda. So we'll duke it out there, huh? Sure. Yeah, I have a couple of questions that might. Be more appropriately asked and exactly. She sent in some subsequent information. Do you see that, Mike? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes, I did. Yep, yeah. I did. Yep. You're in that. That's all I had that I had to cover. Anybody else? No. No. So, Irina, in the last couple of weeks, I've met with two entities. We met with a private fiber company that was really looking to partner with the island as <clears throat> our vendor more or less which would replace spectrum and then last week myself and some members from the tech advisory board and jen met with um ecc technologies and a couple of representatives from polling cars's office on the erie net project long story short is the dark fiber study that we did a few years back that we were contemplating this could basically fill that hole, but for a lot less money, potentially really no upfront costs on behalf of the town. Erie Net, it's Erie County took some ARP money, set up a 501c3. They're going to operate as a, basically they're gonna operate as a broadband company. They're going to connect all Erie County facilities, which on the island will include the library and the fire hall because it's a 
9-11 dispatching facility. Um, they're approaching all of the other communities in Erie County and trying to determine if anybody would be interested in joining with them to build out a network that'll include, for the most part, public and potentially private entities. On the island, it could end up being just public because of their need to probably work with the DOT to come across the bridge is my understanding. But what they're looking to do is basically we can, if we were to express some interest in getting on board, they have that big chunk of ARP money that they're going to use to build out ErieNet, which could essentially, if we say, yes, we're in, all of the dark fiber that we were exploring the possibility of laying gets laid by ErieNet using ARP money. And then ErieNet, we would subscribe to them and they would basically replace Spectrum for our broadband services. Um, it would likely be cheaper monthly. And again, we potentially miss the entirety of that two to 400 plus thousand dollar upfront costs associated with building out the fiber ourselves. At this point, what they're looking for is letters of intent from communities that would be interested. It's non-binding. We could put in a letter of intent. If we are one of the first ones in, we're one of the first ones that they'll build out when the project comes to fruition. But if we submit a letter of intent and once they get the final designs and stuff done and get an estimate of what the monthly cost will be and we think it's too much, we can bail out, no harm, no foul. So I wanted to bring that to you as guys. As long as we're certain that it's not an obligation, if you know It's not I mean. an obligation. I think mm -hmm. even, yeah, let's, I'm fairly certain. we can't get a quote or a feel this, for what the price is outside of that. They then. couldn't really because it's going to be depending on how many people subscribe. And again, like even, you know, there's the possibility that if a, if a private fiber company here wanted to build out and then use their backbone to offer services to their customers, they would allow that. But again, it could be because of the DOT regs that they're not able to do that on Grand Island. Hopefully they would, because then we're also getting a service to. And my only other question is 5G is here almost, 6G is coming. Does that in any way obsolete this? Not really, because all the 5G towers have fiber cables running to them. Mm -hmm. That's how they're fired. Yep. So I think, you know, my proposal. Well, yeah, would be, that, I agree that, but not in, not asking, for used will this residential. Be obsolete technology. And in that sense, no. no. No, fiber is not. I mean, no. The, the hardest thing Tom will probably share with you is the time frame. So Unfortunately. We walked away yeah. from the meeting. We we're like, it was great, but. Unfortunately, we're looking at three years ish before they're fully built out and just for what we're talking about i i did the audit today it was one of the um utility audits I mean, we're paying time warner right now in excess of 3400 bucks a month for our cable and internet service which is 100 megabytes per second i get two times that at my house and we're running the town on that for 3400 dollars a month we suffer every day with it's, that. Yeah. We no large this. Documents. I mean, for us, well, maybe that's our server. That's and and even the server. gentleman from because ECC Technologies, who's ErieNet's partner for this project, is who did the fiber study for the town of Grand Island in the school district back in 2017. The tenor of the discussions we had was, you guys not endeavoring on this was the best decision you ever made Absolutely. because right now we get all the benefit with. Right. potentially none of the cost. I mean, it's so, an opportunity. Mike, we took a lot of flack for that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, paid off yes, I'm inclined to, to nod my head and tell you to put a lever tent together and bring it to the board next next meeting. Yeah. No other towns have yet. Yeah. We're like, so what other towns have? They're like, well, they're all kind of at this stage. Ironically, but the other the other towns that have expressed a great deal of interest are what he said, we're generally towns in the Southern tier who like us have yes. one provider with no competition right. and nothing else in sight. So yeah, it's going to take a while. Well, Why not be early in on the list? Um, because it isn't binding. They went over that a lot, Mike. So you don't want to get yourself in a situation like you could have been in before. We would have been spending a lot of money but, for and very and frankly, you know, in turn, Jen and I pointed out that we have, we have some, empty conduit running yeah. up and down the boulevard that yep. if they came here, we they could find, we could it. help them use. Yeah. Yep. So 
I was, still, though, for, for the record, <laughs> I have not been proven that that is not a conduit to nowhere. <laughs> it won't be. It, right now sure. it is. You're completely right that it is. But we have the build for, we uh, dig one's policy. So it is going to be empty at some stage, So, which is now. And right. now we have a financially wise way to address it. Mm -hmm. Anybody, I'm buying time until John's done talking with Peter Godfrey. <laughs> everybody okay if Jen and I I'll yeah, probably we'll, work with the tech advisory board to put together a letter of intent that I can bring back to the board. Really good. I'm, I'm good with it. it. All right. That good I can John? buy into. No, sorry. Good with it? So far. Yep. To say well, yeah. You guys are just fighting over. No, internet. we agreed. Fighting over? We just once agreed we weren't. over. Uh... <laughs> well, whether the condo goes anywhere. Um, no, we uh, agreed that we were going to do a letter of intent. We don't need his vote. Yeah, that's fine. John, but that'll no, be. I, I, I talked to Tom about that goal. this morning. Yeah, we'll, we'll be next yeah. week. We'll prepare it. We'll put weeks. it on the agenda. Yeah, that's perfect. Sounds good. Yep. Okay, is that it for that. That's it. Sounds like Mike, you have the next item. CPA, right? Yep. So the CPA audits um, at our last meeting on Thursday last week, we scheduled the third to 2 p.m. to do the first two um, suppliers. We're still good with that, or where are we at with that? I can't make it on the third, but whatever we got to do, do. I'm good next week. Um, 8th, 10th, and 12th. So that's Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, 8th, I have a meeting at 3 o'clock, I believe, with someone. 1 to 3 on the 8th? Um, Let's see the eighth. Uh, hold on, I gotta get to my outlook. Eighth. Uh. Oops. We'll video it so you can three watch it. Three o'clock. I have a meeting, so if we could do it up to three, that's fine. about twelve thirty to three. Yeah. We do twelve thirty to three. Make fine. sure we're not rushing it. Twelve thirty to three. Everybody okay with that? Um, this is on the eighth. Yeah. Do we know if Pam's available? I have a I have a three o'clock. She has to not. Yeah, and we just I arrange have it with so you. that you well, guys yeah. can yeah. cut and run for your three o'clock. Yeah. Right. I don't. She said she planned that out. So is that a workshop Monday, November? How many want to do 12 that? Twelve thirty. Monday, you know November eighth at twelve thirty. Right. What's that? You know which ones? It'll be. I got to go from memory here. I know we got Allied and EFRP tomorrow, tomorrow. or Wednesday or Wednesday. Right. Wednesday at two o'clock, and then we have. Drescher, Bonadio, and London or London, Lumsden, Lumsden McCormick. Yeah. You were testing me on that. So I don't know. It the, doesn't matter what order we go the in. The time frames is two to four on what, this Wednesday, and then 12 30 to three on 11 8. Yeah. Expecting to end a little early so that these guys can make their meeting. Understood. We... But I'll try and set up the first one, 12.30, and then okay. 1 o'clock, 1.30. With the calendar, we can Mike, settle. with your calendar suggestion of wanting to approve on the 15th, do you need, do you want to have a workshop or a discussion time to debrief on either the 9th or the 10th? Because well, I would think that on the 9th, if we go right to 3 o'clock, that will give us at least 45 minutes. Of deliberation. Deliberation. Okay. We have something on the ninth as well. No. Talking about the eighth. Sorry, the eighth. Sorry. I, uh, so the. the oh, I understand. Yeah. 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 So from twelve thirty to three. I mean, at thirty minutes each, we got an hour and this a half. This session, he's saying by two two fifteen, we'll be done interviewing. Right. We can debate and discuss then. Okay. That'll okay. give us forty five minutes. So you, we'll record the sessions then. Yes. So if okay. Pete misses, yep. Yep. he can watch. I'm gonna try to, but I I got something going on. I've, it's kind of floating around Wednesday, so those are gonna be public anyways. Those okay. Types of interviews are always okay. Public for, so if anyone wants okay. to join us, all right. Or if they're anybody wants they to listen, not join. Something. Yeah. Well, no, watch. Yeah. Right. They could attend. Yes. Yep. But if they'd rather stay home and watch paint dry, that's okay too. That's about the same. Okay. That's it for me. That's yeah, it. That okay. One. Uh there was a uh I received a letter from uh, attorneys Cook and Stefan. They represent the Julius family, owners of lot 36.13-1-39, vacant land abutting Oak Court, a paper street in the town of Grand Island. It's out by the Nike base. Yeah. Um 
So I, they're, they want to sell it to us for $400. Um, it's right off Linden Concourse. We, we own a lot of the surrounding land. Is that what they wanted to do was sell it? That was a little bit confusing in what they wrote. Oh, my parcel is assessed. Yeah, I was uh, my client older. They're older and wishing to sell. If you're interested in acquiring additional land, please contact the undersigned. Okay. I suggest okay. we just refer this to Peter and have him write a letter that if they want to donate it to the town of Grand Island, we'd be glad to accept it. Right. Yeah. That, that would be my point. Were they saying donate or $400? Well, they're saying it's this assessed at $400, and then they say they're willing to sell the property. Okay. I mean, if it's connected and it makes it bigger and more it's, of a park potential. It does add to our land. It's not. It's, we're nowhere near it right now. It's but not right. accessible either, really. It's, it? it's accessible to us. Right. Right. But to our no, backlands. Right. There's no way. To I mean, it, it's it's a small sliver that really has no value alone. Right. right. But if you add other slivers Hence to the it. Hence the $400. And it's not it, buildable. It has, What's yeah. the what's the size of it again? It's oh, less than it's, an acre. It's really small. It's yeah, like it's it's, it's landlocked back land, you know. Got it. Yeah, exactly. And there's also a piece of land next to it that's owned by the county, which I assume so went it's for not back taxes. Taking a buildable property off the no, it's not, no, it's not a buildable lot. No. It's, it's just, it's just a. I, I would take it. Do we need to take action on this or no? No, just refer it to. Just I'll just have Peter Great. send him a letter. And okay. Peter, I'll buy it for the four hundred if I got it. <laughs> Give it right. to the and then donate it to the yeah town. right <laughs> tree ordinance update yes so peter where are we at with converting it to a or cleaning it up or whatever i know it's short notice here uh but um should be good to go we had that pretty much ready oh did you send it out already i don't think i sent it out oh but let me pull it up so, Tom, so we had a draft, but it needed some work. And Tom had other considerations that we'd want to talk about weaving into it. But did you get that email? I thought we were going to like have a workshop and go through because there were like some conceptual things about what to do. It wasn't yeah. just legal. Yeah, edits I think, yeah. That we, I think we need to one it. more. I really think I, a workshop would come in handy. I have a draft on that I can edit if we want to go through it. And there are some things as we go through it that I would See, at I least bring to your attention. I think like, the notes that we have there, though, Without the wording that you're going to suggest, it's going to be in some. We're well, not going to come up with the wording. In, in no, the but some of it was whether or not we could do, right? Yeah. How far we could go. Like there was some stuff where I we think, wanted I, some accord. Maybe Wednesday they're not going to be with us, right? For the interviews. I mean, we could always go a little after. And just we could call people. Have them or we just have we could call it. Yeah, we could hang up. You know, just end the meeting and call in. Yeah. That'd be great. Well, Pete's not going to be there. So, yeah, I got a few ideas that I'd like to just broach by the board. So just some ways we can kind of make so this a little more both, workable. I think we need some work done before we have a, a concentrated workshop to do further work. And Pete, the, the main one was just Tom was looking for some additional teeth. Um, if they were to go and clear cut, other than currently it's like a 250 fine. Some folks are suggesting we should make it a 500, but even at 500, it's not a distance. They'll laugh all the way to pay. They'll pay the check three times and laugh up the whole way. So um, what was being suggested is, and I'm not sure how we put it. It was four to one. I'm not sure if we were saying four to one acres or four to one trees that were, were removed. And how I, do we was, measure that? We need some measurable. Peter, I, I think. That suggestion came actually from Bob because yes, I forgot it what portion of the federal with um, a federal law of DEC. some sort. Well, federal wetlands mitigation is four you, to one. If you are going to encroach on federal wetlands, they typically have a three to one or a four to one requirement that you you reconstruct new wetland yes. for a mitigation program. So we are trying to mimic. A penalty like that um well, you had other ideas i did so like and, and we could talk about more of that later but i really i really like kind of looked at this thing really hard and we've been working on this a couple times now over the past few years and it's just i, I don't think there's a way to put teeth in it that it's going to work um i'd like to have some discussions with the board some really open discussions in a workshop and just talk about some other methods. Cause I, I do agree that the town needs some sort of um, process to get through this, but I don't know that it's gonna stop clear cutting. 
I don't think we're going to see that. I think we need to just, I think we need to look at it a little bit differently. So, so I do think we need to educate the public. This will not stop clear cutting right. where right. there's going to be in a, a development. Right. So, I mean, if anyone thinks that that's what this is going to do, it won't. Right. What it will do is give us the opportunity to have a discussion about mitigation. Right by means of them submitting a mitigation plan. So they have mm -hmm. had to take use a thoughtful process to, to describe what they're gonna to do to mitigate the impact. The other thing is, which is this teeth part, is right now if there's a 250 or $500 fine, that is irrelevant. They'll go in clear cut, no permit, pay the fine, right. not, not right. have any problem. Yeah. The wood's so, worth more. Like, so when, you can sell, when you can sell a large diameter oak tree for 250 bucks. Right. Yeah. Goodbye. Right. So, so the big question is, and I really think we need um, legal to write something that is defendable legally that has that, that teeth aspect, whether it's four to one tree replacement. If they go in and clear cut without a permit, there needs to be some kind of a consequence. And what consequence can we legally defend? That's what we're going to be and looking that's for. Why Bob so talked about look backs of three to five years. Yeah, we said five peaks yeah. actually suggested five years. So yeah, I, I don't know that we can actually what a look back is actually going to give us unless we go through every third year and inventory a piece of property that we don't know is going to get cleared um, as far as what it goes. Now, I'm just going to go back in time a little bit, probably about three and a half years ago, uh, I dug into a bunch of this stuff because we were working on, if you remember the, the rec fees for the parks. Okay, and we, we made a, a little bit of a change to that um, as far as contiguous housing and stuff like that goes. And by the way, before I forget, I think we should really look at that this year strongly to modify the, the rec fees um, coming up forward. Anyways, at that time, we, we kind of looked into, uh, potentially looking into like a green fee or a conservation fee or something like that that would be involved with all uh, subdivisions. I think it was major subdivision. Major subdivisions would be the trigger and commercial lands over X acres that they would be, that would impose a green fee on all these developments at the time of approval. That is something that I'd like to talk about with the board. Um, Cause I think there's a lot of potential there to basically say, we're gonna charge you upfront period if you develop this property if you bring us a uh, a very nice plan as far as tree, tree saving trees as far as um, um, screening all this other stuff we can talk about reducing that number but we're going to charge you this number immediately so what that does mike is when a, when a developer is looking at a project they're not going to want to cut the trees down because they're going to want to barter with them later so what I'm telling you is they're not going to want to cut the trees until they talk to the town. So I, I'd really like to have this discussion a little more in length with the board and have it a little more with legal involved just to see what we can do. But I think, I think it's a, it's a rabbit hole. I'd like to go down. And I think it's, it's not trying to compete with what you're doing. Cause I agree with what you're trying to do. I'm just trying to do it a little bit different way because we've been struggling with this tree ordinance for going on 10 years now. 20 years. Yeah, uh, 20 years. Mike, right. That's no exaggeration. I, right. I, I know it is. Over 20 I, know, I realize that. And, and it I keeps think, getting killed in committee. But well. I don't know what's, what's really bad I mean, about you it. and I had at it twice on this, and Pete's bringing up. I mean, I think one thing the five of us are in agreement in on is that something does need to be done. Yes. I, I think this is, you know, I, we're, Pete's got different ideas. I have, you know, I threw some ideas out there, but I think we need to we need to get something done. Yes. I'm open to exploring. I do not want to kill in committee. I want to just put no, it all on the table I, and we can pick our best avenues and take them. I, I'd also say the one that you have, the draft, doesn't really accomplish what we're even talking about. No. You know, it it was intended to do no. different things. Right. If the goal was to, you know, prevent clear cutting and, and things like that, that it just I would approach it differently from the outset. Yeah, so I don't think and it's going to prevent clear cutting. It's really, if if it's a developer or commercial property that's being developed, there is a permitting requirement before you go in and clear cut. Um, at our last meeting, we did kind of settle on up to five a five year look back. We discussed, geez, how do you prove that or whatever. The reality is, if if a major property gets clear cut, 
the just look on Facebook, you'll have it documented to a T. Every tree you'll have a picture of just about because right now with South Point, you have that right now. So um, I do think there won't be a challenge knowing when there's a clear cutting event. So I don't think a five year look back is a challenge. Um, the big part is, is this, um, I, I do like what you mentioned there, Pete, as far as, you know, some kind of a fee, if you're going to cut down this many trees, there should be some incremental fee to kind of try and reduce or limit that. No, well, I think, I think it's think, more than incremental. I think it's, I think no, Mike, I'm actually talking yes. about every developed lot. So if you subdivide 100 lots, you get 100 times the green fee. You get 100 times the rec fee. Now, when you come in with, a, with an approved architectural landscape plan and you tell us how many trees we're going to save, oh, we're going to keep this buffer here. We're going to keep this natural. Now you take that number that you have, that the town has put in escrow from your project and you start playing a little bit of let's make the deal. So sounds really subjective. That'd well, be tough. the thing is with this, though, that'd be a nightmare. The, the thing is with this is now they're not going to cut all the trees down. Now they're going to keep them until we can talk about it. So they're not going to go in and clear cut, blast through it, and then come back later and say, oh, yeah, here, here's your check. They're going to say, OK, well, I didn't cut it, but I really want to keep this. And I, I'm hoping this gives me some value. And, and keep in mind, back when we started these rec fee things, this wasn't all about just taking money on projects. This was about negotiating uh, lands to connect uh, projects, to create pocket parks and all that other stuff. And that kind of has gone away because we think we have too much land now and we're just taking their money, which I don't think we're taking enough, but that's just my opinion. Um, you know, I really think that if we wired this backwards to where th that you would have the developers coming to us wanting to save the trees, I really do. And I think we should just at least sit in a wor workshop, talk about the legalities of it and see if it's a potential. I, I think that is going to make it so complicated. It will be a nightmare to manage. That's my personal opinion. Yeah. Also, I think, you know, we've come so far with this at this point. Um, we keep sending it back to committee. I really think Jen make it, made a great point that we as a board need to roll up our sleeves and come up with the final and mm -hmm. put it out there, go to public hearing and go on record with a vote. Okay. Um, Peter Godfrey, um, you said, I'm going to just answer your question. I, I'm not sure if you looked at the most recent version that came out of last week's uh, discussions, but right now the way in which we have it written is there is a permit requirement before any clear cutting occurs on any commercial property or development, um, major development or um, housing development. So there's a permitting requirement. In that permit, they must talk about mitigation. How are they gonna mitigate any clear cutting that's, a, that's occurring? There's a five year look back. Um, if they went in clear cut without a permit, we're gonna to have to talk about um, grandfathering. Obviously it's from the date of the five year look back will only be a few months initially because it's gonna be whatever the, the effect of- look back will be five years away. Right, yes. We have to we have to elapse that time. Correct. Right. So it'll be, it'll initially it'll be the date of the institution right. of the law, and then it'll end up five years, right. five years from Just now. Just a question, Mike. Is this starting to deviate into where we've determined we need another workshop and we should save this content for that? Yeah, yeah, I just want what do you think? Peter to understand, but I do want to answer okay. because I don't want to go back and just say, okay, Let's scrap this and start all over again. Oh, no, I'm not no, saying no, no. that. I'm not but trying to scrap it. And the only okay. Because that's no. you're, what you just suggested is no. a whole different animal than what we were talking well, it's, about. It's potentially not, though, because it's like not. with those, like, like I said at the end of the last meeting, the Lancaster, the reforestation fee is not part of the tree ordinance. It's elsewhere. So these may be things that we can do in tandem right? to really, because this has been my issue with the way that we've we're approaching the tree ordinance now is it focuses on clear cutting, but not so much on true mitigation and reforestation efforts. And I think the point Pete is trying to make is that if you flip this around, you give them a reason to keep the trees and a reason to really come up with a good reforestation plan. Yes. They may be able to present a landscaping plan that blows us away for less than what they would be charged in a fee. And that's the type of stuff that I was getting at where I would like to encourage that type of behavior because that at the end is a better solution than just saying stop. So I think. So I guess, I guess that's what we're going to ask 
Peter Godfrey yeah, let's, is we mm-hmm. need you not just to come in and listen. We need you to come in loaded with, okay, here's option one, option two, option three. Mm-hmm. Which one do you want to pick yeah, from? Who's got the version that <clears throat> I'm looking at Tom's email? That is the Mike, most- Mike sent the one and I responded to it. So I've got your response, but I don't think I was copied on Mike's initial one. So I, I only have your comments okay. on something. Well, Mike can send the one. For I'll me. send it over to you. Okay. Well, let's schedule another yeah, word. Pick a, pick a workshop. Dave. Yes. I, got- I know that you got it though. Yeah. Okay. Just, okay. just let, not the past couple of days. No, it was uh, last Thursday. Week or whatever. Thursday. So I've got an email from Tom responding. Or no, it, Tom sent it with the copy attached. No, I, I didn't. You had the copy. Well, now we know what happened. And then I responded to your email Lovely. closing it. Yeah. I but it, th- those, those should have come within 10 minutes. I wasn't copied on your October 22 email. Okay. But Tom copied me on the reply. So we, we somehow missed you, but that's okay. Okay. Well, let's so, plan- so Peter... Godfrey, Understood. we just, yeah, we need options. Um, and that's on us. To come both in terms go. of look back, the teeth, and this fee idea. Let's so. pick a date. When are, we, when are we doing it? Well, the eighth is booked. How about the 10th? <laughs> <laughs> um, the other question I have is, I mean, it sounds like this board is committed to getting something done. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I appreciate that. Okay. Um, Pete, can we have a conversation between now and then? Yeah. I'd like to explain to you a little more what I'm trying to say. I love it. Okay. And then okay. we can just kind of Good. throw it all on the table and maybe we can mix and match and see what makes sense for, for the thing. The first half of the law, I'm, I pretty much like. Um, I think we could just use it a different way, though. And we'll talk about it. Uh, what time of day are we doing? 10? How do we set it? Throw out some. Let's do this. Let's set the, the date by email because yeah. I can tell you the afternoon on the. Let's time. let's right. do it let's, by email. I, we're usually pretty good with setting a date through email. Work better. Yes. I'd rather. I, I don't just have make my, sure Peter's copied on the email. Mike, okay. you get, at, at the we, Hodgson Russ address. Mike, oh, you'll get that started. Yes, I will start that. It looks like I got some at two o'clock. And send it to Peter okay. because he's, yep. it's hard for him to draft the law without having it. But. Right. Okay. Right. Rivertown. Okay. Are they all here now? I don't. Mr. Dewey. Officer Dewey. Oh, it's not. It's, um, it's yeah, Tom, Tom standing right there. Tom Wilson in. in the Rivertown crew. What about police reform and oh, all the other stuff? Well, we can, yes. if they're ready to go, they're on the end. Okay. Yeah, I would. Let's I get would that over with. Police first. reform is probably quick. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. They're all here? Yeah. I okay. She was, but she was <laughs> that's not her. Lisa was here, Lisa. but Tom yeah. has switched out. <laughs> There's Frank. Good. The for microphone, gentlemen. Whoever speaking, please grab the mic. So yeah, please and state your name. So for the record, uh, Frank Shanisi, Legacy Development. Do you guys have something you want to throw up on the screen? Yes, it's easier to get. I thought you mentioned the PowerPoint from before. So just give me one sec to get this. Frank, are you signed in so I can get the spelling of your name? Would you? There's a sign in sheet. A sign. The Would you mind desk. so that I have the spelling of that for the record, please? Thank you. And then we can just do a screen share. While they're getting a screen. And screen. Any of you guys need to come back here to point anything, whatever is best. It'll screen share for the, uh, the YouTube people. Your name was Roger, correct? Yes. Right, which one? Say this. And sorry, is it Emery or what's what's his name? No. Do you know? Uh, this is Roger right. Trammell. I know that. This is more important. The board will hear what you. Want I think. To put on I think. Now. And then Eamon can, like is going to work with uh, my partner Chuck Malcolm over the next couple of weeks to get it done. Who's the E? E somebody? Emery. Oh, how do you say? How do you spell your name? That's E A M O N. Got it. Thanks. Thank you. Is that all you guys need tech wise? Yeah, I think we're all Let me know when you want me to go to a new slide. <clears throat> Thanks, everybody, for having us back. Um, so you can flip ahead. So, this is a site, uh, it's 25.887 acres um, right in the center of Grand Island. 
uh, located between Grand Island Boulevard, Baseline Road, and north of uh, the properties sited on Webb Road. Um, the parcel is um, does contain um, you know a, a lake. It has a little bit of wetland area down the bottom um, right hand that we plan on con conserving. Um, and then it does have two entrance points on Grand Island Boulevard uh, that will provide good access for the site. And it, we do plan also to connect it to Baseline Road. Uh, you can move ahead, please. So the zoning of the parcel um, is undergirded with R3, R1D, and CBD zoning. So the CBD zoning is primarily located along Grand Island Boulevard. Uh, the R3 um, is predominantly the two large center parcels. And then um, locate along Baseline Road, there's two, um, or rather one R1D parcel that is part of our project. Um, altogether, the zoning currently would allow us to build up to 340 units on the, on the site um, in combination um, if we were to proceed a, with an as right plan. Uh, you can move along, please. And sorry, could you repeat that one more time? That for that, it, as right, that's if as you a, did not have a PDD, is that correct? Correct. correct. Got it. Okay. So um, I'm sure you're all familiar with the comprehensive plan. And the comprehensive plan specifically calls for a town center development um, within the center portion of Grand Island. Um, it also calls for um, mixed use zoning um, and high density housing in this area. Um, that there, during that time when the comprehensive plan was created, um, all of those factors would have been considered for them to make that recommendation. And I imagine that at that time, the comprehensive plan was written. It similarly went to the conservation advisory board, the traffic board and everything else in that review. Um, and in New York state, um, underlying zoning has to, be, has to find its um, logic in the comprehensive plan because the comprehensive plan specifically calls for this type of development, we feel that the PDD rezone is wholly appropriate. Um, our vision for the site, and if you can uh, move forward, please, um, is a creative mixing of uses that is more architecturally creative than what we would be allowed to do under the R3 zoning. And that is exactly what a PDD is meant for. Uh, because it has um, its nexus in the comprehensive plan, um, what we seek to do is create a town center or village feeling in the center of Grand Island, which by the comprehensive plan is lacking. Um, and if, by doing so, what we hope to achieve is a greater sense of place along what is known as uh, Grand Island's center commercial corridor. Uh, if you could move ahead, please. <clears throat> and one more. So as I said, we are hoping to create um, it's the island's long sought uh, town center with a mixing of uses organized and enhance a sense of place with better amenities, walkability uh, that this area lacks. Please move in. This is a massing diagram of what our current um, concept plan represents. Up front near closest to Grand Island Boulevard is the largest amount of density. These buildings are imagined as mixed use with uh, street level activation along uh, that center spine. Uh, this is to give opportunities for commercial um, and to you know, offer restaurant space and to give it a sort of main street area. Uh, we plan on using- uh, and Could you just point where you're referring to? I'm sorry. Okay. Sure. Here oh, you got, yeah. Here, so, and is that two bullet so right pieces? There. Okay, got right, it. so if you imagine you enter from the bottom left-hand uh, road and you uh, travel north or well West, up on this yep. on this drawing uh, that is the central spine mm -hmm. so as you travel through the center of that area um, on either side you'd be presented with fenestration um, that would give opportunities for uh, commercial on the first floor with uh, cafe seating potentially outside uh, different uh, and that's position. those buildings in the gray to the right right dead center yes. okay mm -hmm. no right there in the center yep. yeah the mass so those are really, yeah, so. And so okay. those are mixed use buildings and that is really where the bulk of our uh, multifamily residential is. And one more time, mixed use means residential. People could be, could be apartments with commercial. Stuff. Most often commercial in this floor situation, one. it means uh, commercial on the bottom with maybe some along the edges and then primarily residential. Above. And the height. Too. So 
the three closest buildings so that rectangular building yep. um, Got it. all the way to the bottom yes. and those two no um, all the way to the bottom this one to no to the uh, right it's kind of uh, I think he's asking about the ones that are closest to the yeah so those two that your mouse is over um, yeah those two I think are, Mike's concern are these ones up here that are closest to the right the right single so, family homes on web. Everything closest to Grand Island Boulevard is four stories. And what we're doing there is condensing the units really to increase the amount of open space. Um, we're not able to do that as well. We have achieved in this plan, if we are not allowed to pursue four stories on those buildings, we'd have to spread them out throughout the site more. Um, the other remaining multifamily buildings all throughout the site are three stories. And your vision of like a town center would be right there, the four Correct. Sure. That intersection. That is the that is the mixed use part of this development. Right. So as you move through the site, um, it, it we've taken uh, steps to gradually um, blend it into the existing uh, land uses of the surrounding area. So as you get further away from Grand Island Boulevard, you first are, uh, you come up against some townhomes, which are three stories but are residential um, architecturally in nature. And then as you go even further into the site. Um, you can see that uh, to the rear of the homes on Webb Road are single family homes. And we've done this to respect those and, landowners. And put the marker on that. Is that right there? Right yeah, yeah that's, that is. Row. Okay, I was just yeah. making sure it wasn't the next one. Correct. Yeah, okay. So yeah. in our, uh, from the planning board, um, the mm -hmm. recommendation that we got, uh, we originally had single family homes all along the back there. By increasing the amount of green space, if you could zoom out a little bit, please. Um, we have over 11 acres of green space, uh, which is 44% of this site. Um, the requirement is only 25%. So we've really gone above and beyond to also, you know, protect the open space nature that Grand Islanders really love about this place um, as much as we can while still achieving a fair amount of density on this property. So we've created a park area. Um, if you look to the left of that main mixed use area, um, that is an, a park-like setting. And then as you approach the lake, in addition to a community. Yeah, zoom in on that, can you, Tom? Which Because you can actually see this the, is park, the park. park yeah? with the trail. Okay, so that is the park. Okay, got it. Yes. Okay. And then as you approach the lake um, in the other direction, that is a imagine. And that park like area is going to be dedicated and no further construction there? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then as you approach the lake, we have uh, a community center, which we imagine with the lake is actually quite deep. So we imagine kayaks and other. How lakes. deep? Um, fifty feet. You tell me. You some places. <laughs> I don't. Some places. It's. It's. I know it's oh, at least thirty. I didn't realize that. Yeah, it's deep. So we yeah. do imagine some community amenities. Is that, that, is that where the drain is then? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I know where that is, and I'm not telling. <laughs> um, and then as long that, as it's not the plug, and we start sinking. That green space right to the uh, left, we imagine as a playground, uh, primarily. So um, those that right. all that green space on the right with all the trees, what looks like a mature forest is who owns that property? Is it? Yeah. It's the backlands of all the yes of the boulevard. So that properties. could potentially be developed, or is that it's wetlands? Wet. It's wet. It's good to hear. Good. It's very wet. See, if you keep going over to the right, there's another pond in there. Yeah, I see that. And that's on a different property. Um. So, if you want to switch to the next slide, please. We just have a different view uh, facing from the other direction, uh, coming off a of baseline road. So um, in the feedback we got from the planning board and from some of the surrounding neighbors, we originally had some townhomes um, sited in this area and we've transitioned them to multifamily. While um, this might sound counterintuitive, what we've really achieved is a um, similar amount of units, but with a more residential architectural style that better matches what's directly next door. Um, so now, you mean which ones roofs? are those? Is that what you mean, peak roofs? These are, roofs, but yeah. then also, yeah, um, so, of being, so you've actually changed that from probably the last time I saw it, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, we changed the, I yeah. think there was three white buildings <coughs> right by the pond there. That was there? from our well, first planning board meeting in got August. It. Okay. Um, so what they are is two stories on the edges, three stories in the middle uh, with a similar amount of units. Um, we do have one townhome site back along the lake and a... Uh, that larger building is three stories and it's imagined as primarily senior housing on the top two floors with parking on the bottom ground floor. Ground floor parking, got it, okay. I was wondering where you're gonna put all the cars. 
Right, and then um, at the corner of Webb Road and Grand Island Boulevard, we also have addition, uh, an additional multifamily mixed use building uh, with, again, opportunities for commercial on the ground floor and residences above. Mm -hmm. um, if you can move on. So you bought that corner as well? Down in the bottom, okay. down this, the bottom right. Nope. Oh, so I don't see a right church no, in the that, town square. Down over to the right. It's across the street. It's across the street on baseline. Oh, there you go. The church is on. One of the ideas of this kind of park plan is not to be all things to all people inside the project. There's a lot of amenities that for the sake of the sake of the church, but there's a lot of amenities around the Hmm. You never know what like. Yeah. So one thing I don't know is environmental impact statement. Yes. Status. So that so it's still in process. With, um, so you're working on it. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and process wise, we don't give them a scoping document for that. They're just going to no. present whatever. It's a it's a secret determination type one action. They can. We don't necessarily have to do an environmental impact statement. We can give it a negative declaration. Yeah. But it goes through when we do the analysis, secret. you know, based on traffic studies, based on there's impacts, probably not, there's probably not a lot answers. of clearing here, is there? No, because it's already been cleared. <clears throat> and it's pretty dry, I would tell you, for the most part. Yeah. Man, they all. Uh, so again, this is just the plan uh, presented as a site plan. Um, you can clearly see, you know, that main strip uh, that is, you know, more of a traditional main street type parallel parking along the edges. And then as it slowly gets deeper into the site, it is blended again down into townhomes and then single family homes and more uh, residential architectural styles. Does that say dog park in tiny little letters in the middle there? It yes. does. Yep. Yep. <laughs> How big is it? It's Sorry, this, but, it's right here. I don't know if you can see my cursor. Yeah, I'm wondering that, how, in between those. Is that like about 0.75 acres? That's no, pretty big. That's pretty big. And that would yeah. be open to the public. Is that your intent? Uh, I think the primary audience really is the um, reusers of the site. But again, it's not a private development. So it's, yeah. in other words, it, it is, is meant as a, uh, an amenity so that if, if somebody, someone's coming out of the site doesn't live there and it's utilizing they want to get an ice cream cone and go stand there with their dogs. Nobody's going to stop. Yeah. Right. It's kind of a, a period. And it's going to be private property. Well, I would it's draw people. Yep. But, but, at the, but at the end of the day, the idea is to create a public space that, that everyone So how many buildings here need height variances? Uh, it would be the three nor uh, northern the yellow ones here. So would they require variances? Well. I think Pete's question is, which ones will exceed? Where are we going out of the box? Yeah. So, so <laughs> which, no, they wouldn't require a separate height variance if they got approved through the PDD process. Right. But right. So, so if we were to stay with the R3, we would, we would have two buildings that require high height. Right. That's mm -hmm. the question. But in the PDD. They can be included. That could be part of it. And that. what are you talking height-wise? So something in the well, 50 so to 60 I mean, feet range for a four-story? Well, this is more of a question for you. So... We could build flat roofs, which are lower, but less aesthetically pleasing. Right. Yep. Or, but I mean, if you would depend on where you calculate the foot, because normally they're going to cut the height of the midpoint of the feet. <laughs> so you're talking about the highest part. Yep. Oh, I'm just yeah. laughing because we've had this discussion a few yeah. times. But. <laughs> right. So the highest point would probably be about 58 or something. Are you raising up the ground level at all? <laughs> no Another 60 project, feet of fill. Sorry. Yeah, we got to be consistent. <laughs> Touchy <Yep>. subject. <laughs> exactly. Yep. So, I mean, the, the reason but we, we, we tuck those four story uh, buildings far enough away from anybody that is really going to notice the difference. That's the whole point. Because the, the, the point is that we're trying to, you know, the, the, to do it the easiest <clears> way allows us to do this kind of transitionary stepping up of the, the heights of the building because we're, we're you know traditional single family homes and those on that um, southern border as we get into the site going north it gets higher and as you get farther up north it gets higher in that center spot and that's across and that's an opposite all that wetland that nobody's ever going to get near and you know it is a really big part in um, protecting a lot of the green space by getting that additional light 
and also providing yes. critical mass necessary to support these amenities. Mm -hmm. um, that's really, and that's exactly what the comprehensive plan com contemplates. It's a lack of critical mass that helps support the commercial strip that is Grand Island Boulevard. By pursuing this strategy here, we are better providing that density um, that would help you know, bolster those amenities. We could never ever be close to this kind of open space. Yeah, if people could use the microphone, I guess folks on the yeah. are having a tough time. It's just as people so watching the, on the people watching on Zoom on, on Zoom. Right, so, the, so, so the whole oh yeah, yeah. This so, is publicly I, out there. I, I understand. Wide. So so the the point is is that we can never achieve this amount of open space with an as of right plan. We would have a lot less difficulty pushing this project through without the rezone by doing an as of right plan. But this is what the comp plan asked for. We're giving you what your comp plan asked for. It gets you this, these kinds of amenities, these kind of transitionary uses from the web road, single family homes. And so it seems to us that this is about as appropriate as you can get when you have a comp plan that asks for this. So I have two questions. One is this presentation, um, do we have that or can we have that sent to us? This is an updated PowerPoint for you all tonight. Um, so Perfect. I'd be happy to send yeah. it along. Yeah, if you yeah. want, I'll, copy, can send it. It to the I'll copy it from your sure. drive if that's okay, save it to my Perfect. computer and distribute mm -hmm. it. Too. Sounds good. And second question is, um, prior to the meeting on November 18th with the Conservation Advisory Board, a couple of folks be able to just kind of walk around, just kind of do a quick assessment on the property. Is that okay? Yeah, ahead of the meeting. And whether, if you guys would rather, I mean, they're they're able to walk around, probably gonna need hip waders nowadays. No, or, not back there. Or, or an arc. Is it dry? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so it'll be helpful. So yeah. So if you guys this, aren't available, I could walk them around because I know it probably is good, it's not better than you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's your backyard. Okay. Well, okay, so yeah. we'll um, copy you. Um, I'm sending yeah, you an yeah, email. Yeah, yeah. I don't think right. I have anyone else's email. If you could just yeah, so I'll, respond I'll, all and just say for scheduling for the walkthrough, send it to the following distribution or whatever. Great. That Explain great. these. In fact, I already sent you the email. Okay, great. Yep. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> these two structures close to the baseline. So these are, I guess, dueling commercial buildings slash multi-use. No, so those are purely residential buildings. The red? Yeah. They are red? Yes. The red ones are residential all the way up? On the left side of the property, closest to baseline. Okay, so that's just strict residential. Yes. How many okay. story? Uh, two on the sides with a small portion in the middle that is three. Okay, so yeah, the, but the it, tower type thing. Yes. Yeah. Yep. yes. Mm -hmm. Not a tower by yeah. any means, but a you know. It looks, I know what you mean. Right. Yeah, I, I I'm hip. I got it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, sure. So, uh, you know, one element is that uh, the those um, those shapes represent what could be um, the house wouldn't take up that whole piece. So they the lot sizes of the yards are actually larger than they appear here. Okay. Um, the buildings are not that close together. Um, so that's just one element. What size are the lots? Because they are for sale, correct? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So, Sorry. So, so they wouldn't. There wouldn't be lots. These would be patio homes, and the, the patio home legal model is is a condominium, and so it's the the buyers own their unit, and all the space around them is common area, okay. and that just HOA. That, Right. So, yeah. And so it'd be uh, actually a condominium, not an HOA. So it's a condominium. Common. And then, and then the only way, and then we control the use, which is that there is, it's called a limited common area in front and in back so that like your neighbor can't come and set up a picnic table behind your house. So, but so, so the, the amount of green space that would be around those houses is probably about three acres, but it would be kind it would be considered legally common area. And, and just, Obviously, this is conceptual, but how far off the, this road are those patio homes? Um, right now, well, now they're envisioned to uh, have front porches and activate the uh, the street front, so they're actually pretty close, um, about twenty five feet off so, of the road. road. So, and the, will the, will they all have garages? Two car garages? Yes. So they're twenty five feet double wide driveway. So, uh, well, that is uh, that is one piece that we would concretize with a detailed plan. Okay, yeah, I'm just trying to get a ballpark because yeah. I see you got a sidewalk in there too. Um, These are, I think, I, 
these are imagined to have only single um, width driveways, not okay. um, double 25 foot wide driveways. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, they just want their space. They don't want uh, to, all the grass to cut. You know. Just looking at it, I just wondered if you could actually park a car in the driveway and not block the sidewalk. Yes. Okay. All right. I guess that's what I was trying to understand. And I, I seen oh, from earlier actually, plans. And, and this is the kind of architectural style that okay. we're envisioning. So you can see uh, the small house there with the garage up front and then another parking spot. That's your patio home? Cor correct. Okay. And or on the top right, you see, again, single loaded uh, driveway with a garage in front and enough room in, in front of that for another car. Mm -hmm. If you look in the top middle photo, you can see that is the type of structure that we're envisioning as the multifamily um, closest to baseline road where it's two stories um, on the edges. And then actually on the opposite side of this structure is the three story piece. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just a very small piece that has three stories and it's well shielded uh, by the roof lines on either side. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the bottom left, that's sort of what we are imagining for the townhomes. Um, similarly, the, the bottom middle photo is sort of how we envision those larger multifamily buildings to look. Um, and then as I previously mentioned in the bottom right, um, that street level activation with front porches, um, inspiring that kind of a look uh, to help, you know, give a greater sense of place and so, improve walkability. So these two red buildings by baseline, those are bottom left? Uh, the red building, uh, no. Uh, so top top center. center. Yes. Okay, that's what you're envisioning there. Got it. By the way, it's called the big house. But so the architect was going to call it big house, which is meant to look like a big house. It's not what I call a big house. <laughs> <laughs> um, these these yellow uh, branded structures that are behind the residential lot off baseline are what's that? Townhouses. Ta yes, those are townhomes. So, so which that's are? the bottom left. Photo. Bottom left. Correct. Oh, okay. Those are three story. Correct. With a peak roof, hopefully. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And all these in interior paths, these are all walking? Yes. Paths? That's nice. And I think in other conversations you've had, you, you're going to try and broach the subject of getting a walking path from your project potentially to uh, Benderson's project with tops. Maybe there's a lot of wetland in there, but you gotta that's down the road. Okay, get the easements and all that other stuff. Correct. Can we just please try and use the mics? We still have people yep. chiming in. Okay, <clears throat> um, and do you have a picture of your community center? No, we do not at this time. The Lake uh, House Chalet, <laughs> maybe not quite that extravagant, yeah. but um, you know, a single story eave roofed um, structure mm -hmm. uh, with space for a kitchen, um, some community events, you know, that kind of okay. structure. How it's 6,000 feet square feet, roughly, yes. Okay, I'm good. Next one, or is there more? Uh, that's uh, there's this is the as of right plan. That's your as of right, right? Um, this is what we would uh, be able to do under the current R3 zoning on the site, um, looking to achieve that 340 um, unit uh, maximum that we're allowed. Mm -hmm. um, and more or less, it would be um, parent point like in nature. Well, no, I actually I think that's more aggressive than heron point. Is that correct? Those in are all three stories. It would be more similar. Right. Okay. Okay. So just hypothetically speaking, you're, you're gearing this for the retirement community, aren't you? Not no. entirely. I use the marks, guys. Ideally, it would be um, a mix. It would be all different uh, okay. ages. Um, there would be offerings, both, you know, one, two bedroom, three bedroom apartments. So um, a different Okay. Housing style for everybody. The single family homes will attract a different type of user as 
will the townhomes. Okay. So really, ideally, it's um, meant to attract a diverse set of ages. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you for your time. Thanks for coming. So well, Eamon should follow with uh, Chuck Malcolm. I think that he knows uh, sure. Chuck, one of the partners of my firm. He'll walk him through on the legal side, any of the pieces that need to get done to make sure we um, can dot all I's and cross all T's and get things moving forward for you. That's a- Well, the 18th meeting. was the that's, cab meeting. That's the conservation next meeting for us is the 15th. Yeah. We, I don't know if you need to be here, but we should be able to- yeah, check in, check in hopefully with Chuck. Hopefully, we'll be done before. with that point to make the decision on the PDD. Yeah. On uh, the zoning. Right. On the 15th. Yeah. Would you guys mind at some point if we, we broach this with our traffic safety board? I think I think it might be time to let them have a bit of a look at that. Oh, traffic safety board has a. Oh, we, okay. You have the traffic studies? Yeah. We oh, okay. Okay. Traffic. All right. Never mind. Sorry. Okay. We have a mechanism in place where anything that goes to the planning board comes okay. right over to traffic safety advisory board, so they're already in the loop on it. But if you sure. did a traffic study that you haven't shared with the town yet, we'd love it. It should be attached to the secret. Okay, so have we it. have it then. Okay. okay. All right, thank you all. Yep. Thanks, Thanks for coming. Guys. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, last thing on our workshop agenda. So actually, um, a matter just was brought to my attention, and it's serious, and it's unacceptable. Um, first of all, Paul, and you know, regardless of what party, and I'll admit, I haven't been the best fan of Pete, and I suspect he's probably not involved in this, but what's just occurred is unacceptable. Number one, um, the mapping project was led by Kevin Kabala, or sorry, um, Paul Yeager, Kevin Kabala put a tremendous amount of time in. There was probably three or four other folks involved um, that put a, tr a fair amount of time in. Um, and this is what it says on our website all of a sudden, the night before an election. A special thank you to Councilman Pete Marston for all the hours and work you put into bringing your vision to life. And a huge thank you to all the members of the town. So they don't name them. And, and when it comes to your vision, Paul Yeager fought tooth and nail. And to take that away from him, to not recognize that this he was, led this, this effort. What you're referring to is a map of the Nike base trail. We do not use this, our town Facebook page the night before an election for things like this. That's not appropriate. Okay. Posting something about a person that's up for election the night before. We're all sitting here in the meeting. It was, meetings, it so was posted on yeah. Facebook by. I don't by, care who. It wasn't. It and, wasn't and a John, town. You person. already knew about it, so you. It's you knew on this was Facebook. Get po posted tonight, Mike. It's on Facebook from the people from John, the Western New York Land Conservancy. John, it better be posted by a town person because it's posted from the town of Grand Island. Page. Well, I'm just saying I didn't see it on the town website. I it, don't know that that it is that it is and, on and the town website. And it says website. on that site also that Pete Marson led this charge because he didn't. I I would no, have to I look didn't at. Have it. Anything to do with it. He didn't have anything to do with that, but it was. <laughs> I think it was Greg Stevens that posted it. No, there, if you look, I, I don't have any concern about what Greg Stevens is posting. Okay. I, have, I have a concern that from the town of Grand Island page at six o'clock when we're all in here on a meeting, I, someone I is posting from our a page the night before an election. I mean, we're better than that. We're yeah, all so, better so than regardless that. of this was so I could be wrong about the topic. I assumed it was the, the was um, trail map. Post from so regardless the of the topic, Greenway Commission. That's not what we're talking about. John, it's I posted understand. on the grant. No one has permission to post on the Grand Island website other than the folks that control it, which is us and a couple of other yeah. folks. It was probably random. Doesn't make it appropriate. I'm not saying it is. I will talk to her about it tomorrow. And, she and can to, take it down. To post it the, on the I will have her take it down. Unacceptable. Okay, next topic. It's uh, the Community Relations Committee. Peter, do you want to? Sure. Just um, do that. I think that it looked like Tom or somebody had, or Jen maybe had that available to put up. Oh, yeah, I can, I can put it up, Peter. <clears throat> we have the hard copies as well. Yeah. 
So as, as uh, uh, Mike and John have been at, at most of these meetings, we've met how many times? Probably a half dozen or so. Yeah, at least. Since the town adopted the uh, police reform action plan earlier in the year in accordance with the executive law, part of that was that a, a committee be uh, developed. That committee's met a number of times and has updated the police reform action plan consistent with uh, uh, so sort of the initial direction that had been uh, uh, set forth by the town board at the first version of the police reform action plan on which is a public hearing. So this is that. Um, it's been distributed. We, had, we didn't want to put it just on the uh, uh, eight o'clock agenda to be acted on without giving the board an opportunity to see it and talk about it if there's any questions or issues or concerns. Um, we're not required to have an updated plan, but the initial plan contemplated that there would be continued dialogue about those things that were included in the uh, plan that was uh, enacted earlier this year. So um, there's a number of edits. I'm you know, not sure there's any that I wanna highlight as being more important than any other. Uh, it, it really just sort of drills into a little bit more uh, uh, detail. Uh, there's been some you know, good discussion on that committee by the volunteer members of the community, uh, Stephanie and, and uh, who else has been? Dave Pratt. Dave uh, Pratt, uh, Stephanie Coward, uh, in addition to our officer in charge and, and uh, officers in charge. Yeah, both. assistant officer in charge yeah. and officer and in member, charge. And members of the, the town board, obviously, uh, uh, John and, and, uh, and Mike. Mike. So this is the result of that. Rhonda has been the, uh, uh, the <laughs> holder of this. After each meeting, we've sort of circulated updates around and uh, uh, this is the result of those those efforts. So if there's any other comments on it, you can let us know. Um, otherwise, the plan would be to put it on the agenda for the 15th. If there's anything anybody wants to talk about and have a further workshop on that. Yeah, I'd just like to, to mention the process that was followed. Sure. So there was a community group that, that came together. Um, we had two um, of our, uh, the primary two, our two officers in charge, I'm very involved and engaged in the process, Tom in particular. Um, they had a lot of input, feedback. Um, Stephanie, David Pratt, other folks, um, John, obviously. Um, a lot of back and forth, a lot of good discussions. Um, you won't find a stronger supporter of the police than me. You won't find a stronger one than our commissioner, actually, which is John. Um, of course, um, Peter Godfrey was also in, in the conversations heavily. Um, giving us advice, et cetera. Um, I think this is some good changes that we've done. Um, I think it's good for our community. Um, I think it doesn't hurt um, to continuously check, update, make sure we're doing the next right thing. And that's, you know, this hasn't been looked at in quite some time. I, I think- Well, we started out with, I mean, it all goes back to governor's orders, executive order 231 or 201. Is that right? We're already amending the- yeah. We're, we're already this is an the, the, the one we've already basically done. having to reform the way police do business in New York State. And we had several meetings going back um, into 2020 with a, a group of people right here in this this courtroom uh, that started the formation of that and, and had a lot. They had a lot of input and then it evolved into the uh, supervisors committee, yep. which is uh, the community relations committee. And as we, we stated before, there you know the members that have been acknowledged by Mike uh, put a lot of hours into this and a lot of work in it, and it's um, it's a living, breathing document that we continue to uh, will be looking at as as the need arises. Right. Okay. Yeah, there isn't really a, there wasn't a requirement, so it was the two hundred three. Good, good recollection. But the <laughs> whatever it takes. <laughs> the right numbers. There there isn't a requirement. So remember, the first one had to be filed with the state by a. Uh, April 1st of, of this year. We right. got all that stuff uh, done on time. Uh, this one doesn't have this, and it was subject to a public hearing, which we had. Right. Uh, this doesn't, because we're sort of doing additional things beyond that, it doesn't, there's no identified process. Uh, I'd anticipate putting it on for a, a, the next meeting. I don't think we need a public hearing, but we could send it to the state as a further update on the plan if, if it's approved by the board. Right. Okay. Should we do we want to approve it now or do we want to do it next meeting? Oh, well, we'll do it on the, at the regular meeting. Is it on, on the, the agenda 15th. or are we going to spend the rules? No, no, at the uh, no, meeting on the 15th. 15th. Yeah, because yeah, public yeah. gets a yeah. shot at commenting on it. 
Right. Okay. Um, that's all we had on. Anybody have anything else? Public session? Peter, turn the heat well, up a little. I, <laughs> it's Peter, I, I wish we could, and I don't earlier. have great news on that aspect. John, either. thanks oh, for turning the AC on. I appreciate it. The equipment that was supposed now. to be here on Probably Friday is not going to be here until we want to go with it. No, I'd rather do an exam. Yeah, I think it's appropriate for legal advice. And then we have another month and a half work. All right. Time for fire. All right. We have an uh, entertain a motion to go enter into executive session for the purpose of some uh, personnel and legal issues. So, so move. Second. second. Whatever. <laughs> okay. Motion by. <laughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. That motion carries. Jen, do you have a 